Hey guys, here it is, the HP touchpad. I've already unboxed it, and you can see those on the site. For right now, we're going to be taking a look around the device. We're going to be taking a look at the ports and walk through the initial setup process together. At the top, you'll find a power button. On the right hand side, you'll find volume rockers. The bottom has a home key. It feels very nice. All the buttons do on WebOS. On the top, you'll find a VGA camera. In the back, there's the HP logo, of course, no more palm. On the bottom, there is a micro USB charging data port. Overall, the feel is pretty nice. It feels solid. Even though it's not as thin or as light as the competition, it's a very solid feeling tablet. We haven't taken the plastic off, but it's very high quality. Just glass screen. Heavy? Yep. It is. A little bit. It's not bad. If you're laying it down flat, it's fine. On the top, there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's also a mic for integrated Skype and voice chat calls. And that's also part of WebOS. All right, for the next video, we're going to be powering it on and walking through the setup process together. All right, we're back with the HP touchpad. We're going to be powering us on for the first time. Now this one, there's a note about the back of it. There's been a lot of mentions about how glossy the back is, and that is a downer. It is a bit glossy and it attracts fingerprints very easily. But the good thing is HP includes a microfiber cleaning cloth which should and actually does, I've actually had to use it a few times, takes away everything. There's cleaning cloth, basic black cloth, no HP insignia, but whatever. Kinda wish it was a bit more matte, but no big deal. Especially for cleaning off your gadgets anyway. And just a note, there's speakers, there are Beats Audio speakers, there's one on the left, and there's going to be one on the right. <laughs> we just we were taking out the touchpad for the very first time, so sorry about not getting the directions right as far as where the speakers were. Alright, so now we're going to power it on for the very first time. Hopefully there's some battery life in this. We never really tested it yet. It'll be an adventure for all of us. Alright, there's the HP logo. The screen is a 9.7 inch IPS display and the, the, the IPS technology should allow us to get very good viewing angles no matter which orientation the tablet is or where you're looking left or right or you know above or below the absolute center so it should be a very impressive screen. So far I've used a touchpad for about two weeks now and it has been very it has exceeded my expectations. It's a very nice tablet. Check the post for more thoughts on the HP touchpad as I'm using it day to day for, you know, just browsing for school, a little bit of everything. Um, the first boot seems a bit slow, but it's not too bad. You see the HP logo glowing there. At least it lets you know that it's actually trying to boot, which is nice. It's always a good idea. Any minute now. Eventually, come on. <laughs> First boot's always slow. I, I have to say that rebooting this is actually a lot faster. It's not this slow when you're actually rebooting the, the tablet, which is 
course, always appreciated. And speaking of that, I haven't had to do too many reboots. I've only had to do one or two reboots, mainly due to Flash. And no, that's Flash, so, you know, take that for what you will. And well, here we go. We're on the language setup screen. On the left, you'll see t where you can access the application menu. Title of the apps are always on that upper left hand corner. On the right, you have your wireless indicator, your battery, and your time. Sorry, it won't focus. I have a little bit of trouble auto focusing. That's okay. We'll go ahead and see how the touch response is on this thing. Wow, it seems pretty snappy, at least so far due to the setup process. We'll go ahead and accept the language there. So we'll hit yes, check mark. All right, let's see what the next screen is. All right, Wi-Fi setup. So we're gonna go ahead and pick it from the list and I will do the password part off screen. Here's the on-screen keyboard. Now, a unique thing about this keyboard is they talked about at CES the ability to adjust the size of the keyboard between large, medium, and small. There's a large keyboard, and it goes away. We can just tap the field to bring it back. Very nice animations, by the way. Very smooth. We'll go ahead and choose the small keyboard just to see what the difference was. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and choose extra small there. And that's pretty small, but <laughs> it's not too bad. I, I've tried it. I'll switch it back to medium for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and enter my password, and then we'll be right back. All right, so I've entered in the password, and I'm going to hit sign in. And so far, the device has been pretty snappy. I haven't noticed anything, any slowdowns, any lags during the setup process. It's all been very smooth. So maybe things will change when, you know, things, you know, are signed in and everything. All right. Let's see what it's doing now, huh? Ah, terms and conditions screen. It's always fun. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom there. There we go. It's all very fluid. Scrolling is very fluid. I like it so far. I'm going to hit I accept and continue. And it's asking us to create the WebOS account. Now, that account will let us back up everything to the HP server, and it'll also keep all of our, like, you know, our Gmail and stuff in sync. And now we're going to enter in all of our information to create an account. First and last name first. Keyboard seems pretty easy. It's, of course, difficult to type on a screen when you're looking through it using your camera, but so far it seems very responsive. It's just a matter of me finding the keys, but so far so good. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and choose. Let's see. Yep, we can move the cursor back and forth. Might not be able to see it in the camera. I'm just going to see if we can change it by touching the input box, and yep, you can move the input box, the cursor in the input box to change something. I had my nickname in there, and now it's correct with Richard. We'll go ahead and do the email and password, and we'll just create. create. I already pre-filled in the rest of it. Figured you didn't want to watch all that. And now it's setting up that. And now we're at the Google Terms in Condition screen. It uses Google Location for um, location-based services. It'll show it on the Bing Maps. How ironic, huh? Um, so far, I'm having trouble <laughs> touching the screen through the camera, but believe me, it is very fluid and responsive, as you saw when I scrolled the box there. We're going to turn off auto locate just for now just to see how it works with that um, so far I haven't had any issues with it asking me for location each time and now it's going to reboot the computer I mean the tablet 
<laughs> and you'll you'll see the difference in reboot speed when this reboots. So far, the screen on this thing is absolutely radiant. It looks great. Um, I'm not sure what brightness it's set to, probably 100%, but it is very bright, very crisp, very clear. It is a very nice screen. Um, it is, of course, glass, and as you can tell by the lamp there, and probably my hand, and you can see my phone slash camera there, 